right, let's change gears just a little bit, if we can. I want to talk about treating relapsing or refractory Hodgkin's lymphoma at this point. So, Dr. Pinder Brown, can you start us off on this discussion? Uh, the current options for salvage chemotherapy, high dose, standard dose, um, isolated radiation, what do you do? No, I think you know, when you're talking about chemotherapy, you're really talking about is the patient transplant eligible or not? Uh, because clearly the standard of care is to have high-dose therapy with autologous stem cell rescue. And if a patient is not transplant eligible, you're going to be talking about more standard doses of chemotherapy or perhaps not chemotherapy in the standard way that we think about it at all. It, it may be some other kind of therapy that you could continue for long periods of time. Uh, have disease control, uh, but not cure. And uh, so in terms of salvage therapy, uh, if we go back to NCCN, there's a myriad of choices, none of which is better than the other, of salvage regimens. What are the preferred options for first-line salvage and then subsequent lines of salvage therapy? I guess it's, what do you like? Well, I like what I wrote. I wrote ice chemotherapy in 1994, <laughs> so I prefer to use that particular treatment. Um, I think that the reason we use it is because it's as good as anything else and it's, and it's less toxic than some of the other regimens. Uh, but there are other folks who have you know, strong opinions on the treatment programs that they have. I think that the, I think that the way to think about it, we should give uh, treatment that's adequate to get the patients into a second remission, if at all possible, um, and then uh, collect stem cells and get the patient to a transplant. The response rate to salvage therapy for Hodgkin lymphoma is three out of four patients will respond. Good numbers. Small group, but good numbers. Right. One thing that's nice about your regimens, every two weeks, you get a pretty quick answer about whether the person's going to respond adequately enough. And the only other um, you know, poor thing or bad thing about the regimen is that mostly it's an inpatient regimen. Some people might want to pick a regimen that's outpatient. Here's a patient who's already gone through a lot of therapy. Their life's been disrupted. It's going to be disrupted further by coming in for uh, autologous stem cell rescue, and we'd like to keep them as, at home as much as possible. And it would be nice to know, wouldn't it, if an inpatient regimen is really required, but we don't know the answer. I, I agree. As I get more mature, um, I believe that uh, the goal should be to get the patient into remission. Um, and the center should use whatever they're comfortable using to get that patient into remission. There was a study that was published by Nancy Bartlett. Um, an outpatient chemotherapy program, gemcitabine, venerelbine, and liposomal doxorubicin. Can you say that five times fast? Sure. <laughs> um, and two out of three patients responded, and many of the responses were complete. My personal bias on that is gemcitabine is a drug that has potential pulmonary toxicity after we just gave bleomycin plus or minus radiation. So I, I'm a little bit uncomfortable giving that first to all of my patients with Hodgkin lymphoma, but there are other folks who have a different opinion on that. That just the regimen that I generally use first line. And you know, I practice uh, in Rochester, so we have a patient population that often travels very long distances, and an outpatient regimen where patients don't have to come back to our center and can get the treatment closer to home lends itself very well. Those distances, however, are scenic. <laughs> they are scenic, it's you know, especially when it's raining. Right? Indeed. <laughs> or As snowing. opposed to snowing. <laughs> um, Dr. Moskowitz.